Okay, so I think we're getting ready for our first BioBlitz in, in that area, in Coyote Creek, uh, in Coyote Valley. And I didn't know the area very well. I visited it a few times. So I went to uh, meet with a local ranger and I asked him if there's any particular places of interest in the area other than where we want to focus for the BioBlitz. And he pointed out a couple of cool seeps that uh, later join the main Caddy Creek stream, but could be interesting to visit. Um, so yeah, so in October, I went to visit one of these places. And I remember it was kind of funny because there's no real trail. And um, I wasn't sure what I'm going to find there. Just like our visit this time, I was concerned about pigs, which are present in the area and I've seen some. I got to this little peaceful area, which was really cool because it was very different than the main uh, creek. So there was a lot of uh, damselfly activity. And one was especially interesting. It's called a spread wing, the great spread wing damselfly. And it's interesting because you could quickly see that they hold their wings in different ways. So uh, that was cool and I documented that. And later on, when I uploaded a photo, then someone identified as the great spread wing Demzelfly and another Demzelfly expert mentioned that it's the first uh, finding of this species in uh, Santa Clara County, which is pretty cool. And she suggested to uh, update the online databases for Odonata for uh, dragonfly and Demzelflies uh, because this is the first record. So that was cool. So it was a, a fun finding. And I thought that could be a good name for that little sip the spread wing sip. Okay, so we made it on our journey to the sip, um, to spread wing sip, I should say. Um, and this is when we can go and have a look in the sip and see who lives here in the middle of the summer. Lots of uh, damselfly activity here and very, very clean water as we usually see. So yeah, let's see who we can find inside. This is one of the creatures that I was looking for. Well, obviously this is a rock, but if you look very, very closely, you will find tiny, tiny round little things. So this one, this is a water penny beetle larva. So it's a, it's a little beetle um, and the larva lives in fresh water, but only in the cleanest water. In Coyote Valley, for example, this is the only place we've seen it so far. So. In order to take photos though, we should get much closer with this little uh, macro lens. Oh, and there's some other creatures here as well. There's some uh, flatworms, which actually don't care at all uh, about the water quality. So you'd find them here, but you'd also find them downtown San Jose where the water is not clean at all. Uh, maybe I'll take a video. We usually see near our creeks are dragonflies and damselflies. Uh, damselflies are easier to identify because at rest their wings are against their body like that. Dragonflies they are perpendicular. Um, also they look much slimmer the damselflies. Um, the cool thing about damselflies that a lot of people don't end up noticing is uh, some, of, some of the uh, damselflies you can tell if it's a male or a female just by the color. Males have bluish color, females are drab, um, grayish in color. Uh, but the thing that I want to talk about today is not the damselflies or the idea of the damselflies, is something that you'll see in other types of insects called uh, uh, praying mantis or mantids as well. And so if you look at the eye, right now it looks like as if the damselfly is looking at you. But if we flip it like that, it still looks like the damselfly is looking at you. 
the same thing if i flip it like that it looks like the damselfly is looking at you and so if there are six people who take a picture in each of their pictures it will look like the pupil is actually looking at uh, the person taking a photo of the damselfly and how is that possible how can a pupil quickly switch directions that fast or the position and uh, the cool thing about that is it's not a pupil it's a pseudo pupil so it's actually an optical illusion and so the way light hits it and the person who perceives that light that spot actually ends up absorbing the light uh, sorry that spot yeah and so that's why you see that dark black spot which resembles a pupil but it's not a pupil so it feels like the damselfly is looking at you but it's not you're not no no you're not a special person it's just the an illusion all right so the damselfly we saw earlier the drab grayish color one was a female this is a male another way you can actually tell the difference between males and females is you want to look at the tip of their abdomen their long abdomen and for males you might see these claspers that they actually use to hold the female by her neck while mating and make her lay eggs and so that's like really prominent in the males which is not in the females so even if you don't remember the color if you just look at their body shape and towards the end of their body if you see those claspers that are just the right width to hold a female and uh, hold her in place so she doesn't escape